I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, Six Pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. this time for Chaz Herring as for the 2012 film Sushi Girl now I never heard of this film um, first off if anyone was ever interested in requesting pretty much any video you do so either by send, sending a request directly via my PayPal or by joining my Patreon uh, the links to both are down below in the info box if not no worries but if so thank you now Sushi I guess the best way to put with Sushi Girl, I would say if you're into films like Reservoir Dogs or Suicide Teens or films where they mainly take place in one location with a group of characters and it involves one person who stays very still, is dialogue heavy, has some flashbacks like Reservoir Dogs has. You can tell some, a film like Tarantino, or she's a director like Tarantino, they were influenced by the people who made this. I mean, even the, the logo of the marketing and during the opening credits and end credits, the logo of each person's name that comes up will remind you of those old school, I guess, grindhouse movies back in the day. And the cast is interesting. You got Tony Todd, you got Mark Hamill, you even have Sonny Chiba in a small role. I mean, one of the opening songs is Diamonds Are Forever from the James Bond movie. And the setup of the film is there was this diamond heist that went wrong six years ago. One of them was arrested. They've gotten out of jail. Him and a bunch of others or a group of others are gathered for this celebration dinner where sushi is going to be served on the body of this dated woman. And even early on, Sonny Chiba is the cook. And you see him pretty much at the beginning of the film and the very end of the film. And he tells this girl, don't move, don't make a sound, don't make eye contact. You're just there to stay still no matter what. Kind of like the Reservoir Dogs, you later have the cop that's tied down Granted, different circumstances, but still. Or Suicide Teens, where you have Christopher Walken tied down. Again, different circumstances. Now, the boss of the crew is Tony Todd. I like Tony Todd. From Candyman to various other films. Good actor. He did a really nice job here. So you have him. You have this recently released from prison guy. I believe the character's name is called Fish. You have Mark Hamill, who is a bit flamboyant. One character keeps giving him derogatory, homophobic slurs. And Mark Hamill gets pissed at him and kind of slides it off. Not in that way. So you got Tony Todd, the, rec the prison guy, Mark Hamill, and then two others. And the other guy I recognize... He's the kid who played one of Randy Quaid's sons in Independence Day. He was the older kid with the long hair. And then the other guy is this very foul mouth guy that he's the one giving Mark Hamill all the gay slurs and all that stuff. And Mark Hamill was interesting with his appearance. He's got blonde hair, he's got glasses. 
some of the dialogue he says. Definitely a, an interesting performance by Mark Hamill. Definitely, it's not a performance I normally see of Mark Hamill. So that made it a little bit interesting. And it's a movie that it's not an action film. It's not a film that has a lot of physical stuff going on. And it mostly takes place in one location. You can tell Reservoir Dogs seem to be a bit of a inspiration for this. Now, granted, it's not as good as Reservoir Dogs, but still. And you have the characters messing with each other. And the story moves forward because they think the guy got out of prison. They think he knows where the diamonds from that heist long ago were put. Because apparently when the cops found him, the diamonds were gone. He's like, I don't know where they are at. And you did flashbacks to the diamond heist. And when you out of that flashback, you get back to this room. And so they tie the guy up. The, the, again, I think his character's name was Fish. And they, Tony Todd tells a story about his dad and this timer. And pretty much each of the guys take turns torturing the guy, beating him up. Mark Hamill will use chopsticks and a hammer to stick into the guy's leg. Meanwhile, I'll go to flashbacks of the Diamond Heist. This is one of the issues I have with it is some of the wasted potential of some of the actors they have. Like in the flashback, where do they get the diamonds at? You have Danny Trejo, Michael Bean, and Jeff Fahey working there. And they're given nothing to do. Literally, Danny Trejo is there to pop up, say hi, walk up to a door, and get strangled. Michael Bean, he has a few more lines than Danny Trejo, walks outside, and then gets shot in the chest with a shotgun. That's all Michael Bean does. Jeff Fahey, he has a little bit more than the other two, because it's when the bad guys go in, and Jeff Fahey has the diamonds, and a little bit of conversation, but again, talented people given absolutely nothing to do nothing fuck I mean you tell me you got Hicks and Luke Skywalker and the lawnmower man in the same movie and you can't have anything to do with that along with Candyman I mean, just wasted potential Michael Bean Jeff A. Dane Trow so I would have rather have them not be in the movie instead of these pointless, useless, nothing cameos. It's like, hey, I'm Michael Bean, dead. Hey, I'm Danny Trejo, dead. Hey, there's Jeff A playing with some diamonds. Okay, he gives the diamonds to the bad guys. Such a fucking waste. They go back, and overall, I didn't mind the film. I didn't mind the film because. Considering it sounds like a boring movie, again, I think if you like Reservoir Dogs, Suicide Teens, I sort of vibe with the dialogue and the actors. It kind of does follow with this. It was cool to see Tony Todd and Mark Hamill play off each other verbally and act with each other. That was interesting. The... I thought the flashbacks were put in there in the right spots to keep the bit of the momentum going. The torture scenes don't go too far, but there's still some eh moments like Mark Hamill. There's a point where you pull some of the guy's teeth out, but it's done in a way that's not too overlong, but enough to be like, eh. And then you pretty much see sort of the destruction of these guys' group when they start turning on each other. And I'll leave it at that. And I, I, again, I'll say that it's trying to be a little bit reminiscent of Tarantino with this dialogue. Maybe not so much direction as in a visual. There's not a lot of visual dealings with the camera or 
editing or some of the stuff that Tarantino would do with playing with cinema. The direction is fairly straightforward. But so when I say Tarantino, I say a little bit with the writing, right? Not as strong or funny as Tarantino's. But it's kind of one of those films, it's hard to review because there is a limited feature with the movie because most of it takes place in one location with a fairly bare room with a naked woman with sushi over her, which just makes me think of Shodan Low Tokyo. And when we get done, we're going to eat some fish off those naked chicks. So, I will say though that if you like Tony Todd or Mark Hamill, it's definitely worth a watch for that. If again, if you like films like Reservoir Dogs, Suicide Teens, in that vein, I'm not saying it's as good as them, but it's not a bad film. Spoiler alert. Spoilers. I didn't mind the ending where they each turn on each other and then Tony Todd finishes the job and then you find out after he eats this piece of fish, but this piece of sushi and it's venomous. And the girl set this all up. The sushi girl, hence the title. Because in the flashback, earlier we had seen that during the escape of the heist, Tony Todd had killed this guy. And that guy happened to be the husband of this girl. And then when the, the guy the character of fish had left and then later would get caught by a cops. Some rip had dropped the diamonds. So she had, after seeing her husband dead, grab the diamonds and use the diamonds to help sort of orchestrate what was going on here. At least they dare in this position to be the sushi girl. Now, one thing about the ending I didn't understand is as she's leaving, you know, Tony Todd's died because Sushi Girl worked with Sony Chiba to prepare the fish so that it's, if you, it's one of those things, if you prepare it right, it's fine, but if you prepare it wrong, it's deadly. So you did that on purpose to kill Tony, to really paralyze Tony Todd, then she shoots Tony Todd. But when she's leaving, it cuts to a van because one of the characters actually had a listening device of the cops. And it seems as if the cops in there are dead. So are we led to believe that Sushi Girl actually murdered or helped in the murder of innocent cops? Or were those cops dirty? She's like, okay, I understand she wants revenge for the death of her husband, but that's resulting in these innocent cops in this van being killed. Or are we led to believe that Tony Todd had killed them? Because Tony Todd does mention like he knows what's up. So maybe Tony Todd had killed them before. And then the end is just, she hired a guy to, I don't know, I guess burn everything. Maybe that's what it's trying to be. I was a little bit confused by that. Now that I think about it, it probably was Tony Todd maybe had killed those cops before because he knew the guy. Because he mentions that he probably has a listening device. So maybe that's what it was. But it would have been nice to have a shot. Like a, I mean, you're doing all these flashbacks. Have a flashback of Tony Todd doing this. Because I don't know, it almost made it seem as if the girl... <laughs> had hired this done. But yeah, the more I think about it, it probably was that. So never never mind. But I think they could have been a little bit more clearer. So never mind. Yeah, it was probably Tony Todd. But like make that a little bit more clear. Maybe the director could have played a little bit more with the visuals. Maybe did a little bit. Granted, it could be showing off. But I don't know. Put some st split screens. Maybe have a moment where all the terror... Like, Maybe four of the characters is a box here, 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 and they'll talk. And, you know, something that Tarantino would do with. Great, he probably didn't do that a lot with Reservoir Dogs, but definitely later in his career. 
uh, just maybe spruce up a, the direction a little bit more, to bring a little bit more energy to it. The the cameos, if you don't have Jeff Hay, Michael Bean, and Dan Trejo, why weren't they the other guys? Honestly, I mean, it's not like this film was in 18 locations and had all this crazy stuff. You could have just hired one guy to be the fish, one guy to be the foul, cursing, homophobic asshole, the one guy to, from who is the kid in Independence Day, the older kid of Randy Toy's Independence Day. You could have had these three guys be those. So, just saying that, I mean, that would have been interesting. But overall, not a bad film. It actually a bit better than I thought it'd be. And I was a bit pulled into the story to see where it would go. So, yeah, not a bad film at all. By the way, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.